The following content is provided by a I Am Refocused radio contributor. Pastor Vera McEwen with Love God Ministries will be sharing today's message. And now, here is your host, Pastor Vera McEwen. 2023 is all about we in community, in unity, as a collective, creating environments where everyone thrives. Today, we have several scriptures, scriptures that speak to us and request one thing. If I were to relay that into a question, that question would be to you, do you believe? Do you believe? We've been walking through the word relationship because in community, as a we community with Emmanuel, that means we are in relationship with God. We are in relationship with the Holy Spirit. We are in relationship with Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are in relationship with all creation. This week, we land on the letter H. We are almost through walking through the word relationship. And we land on this letter H in the word relationship. And here we come across a section, a section on humility. You may turn the question back to me, Pastor Vera, and say, Pastor Vera, do you believe? Oh, yes, I want you to know that I believe. And as I walk through these scriptures today, I find that these scriptures are so in alignment, not because I chose them. We are using the lectionary. And this is what I find miraculous, majestic, magical about belief in God, the one and only God. God puts things together in a way, in a way that helps all flourish. So as we walk through these scriptures, these scriptures that I did not pick, these scriptures that walk through being in relationship, I want you to ask yourself, do you believe? And in your belief, are you a person of humility? Turn with me to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18. And we're going to hone in on one particular verse. If you follow the lectionary, the Lutheran lectionary or the overall lectionaries, you'll see that the verses for today come in chapter 18 of Ezekiel, which is in the Old Testament. So turn back toward the Old Testament and you'll be looking through the prophets after the Psalms. There you'll find Ezekiel 18. And the original scriptures given to us were verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. But we're going to hone in on verse 31. Here in verse 31, the prophet Ezekiel is speaking to us. And at the end of that verse, I want you to read it with me. It says, rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed. If you listen to the entire message of Love God Ministries, one of the things that we do is we confess who we are. We confess that we are sinners in need of a savior. We confess that all of the things that we have committed are wrong. And we give up that and ask God to forgive us, recognizing that God forgives us of all our offenses. And here it says, rid yourself of all offenses you have committed. And then what does it say, Doris? What does it say, soul poet? Braylon, Braylon, tell me, what does it say? It says, and get, 
a new heart. Once you rid yourself of all that you have committed, once you rid yourself of all your sins, get yourself a new heart and what? A new spirit. Get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O people of Israel? Get yourself a new heart, a new spirit. And I love how these scriptures connect. The psalm for today can be found in the middle of your Old Testament, the middle of your Bible. Psalm 25. Psalm 25, we're supposed to read verses 1 through 9, and we'll hone in on 8 and 9. We've been planning these messages for over a year, over a year. And I didn't go through all of the lectionary to find out what was going to happen. I waited for God to give insight and instruction. And insight and instruction said that the letter H would honor humility. Humility, being humble. And here in the psalm, in the psalm we read about humility and being humble. I love that the King James Version speaks to being humble and meek. The word in Hebrew is Anav, anav, humility. And that word means going as low to the ground. It can actually mean lowly, meek. And the word humility is Latin based. And that word humilius means earth, low, down to the ground earth. So we have anav and humilius meaning this humility, this meekness. And then here in Psalm 25, after being told in Ezekiel that we need to get a new heart and a new spirit so that God, verse 8, can guide us, verse 9, because without a new heart, without a new spirit, that new heart that is humble, that new spirit that is in humility toward God, you cannot be guided. Because it says that God guides the anav. God guides the anav. God guides the humilious. God guides those who are humble. Do you believe? Do you believe in the majestic, the majestic, magical, mm, wondrous God? The God that connects a message with a lectionary, the God that inspires, the God that thrills. Turn with me to Philippians chapter Two, beginning in verse 1. The lectionary has us read verses 1 through 13. And what, I don't know about you. I'm reading through the NIV. And the NIV actually says, this is imitating Christ's humility. How cool is that? To have been working on this message, this idea of relationships inspired by God within a wee community year ago, not reading the lectionary ahead, and then humility. The first day that we begin to speak on humility, God has given us the scripture that's all about humility. When we look at Philippians chapter 2, it speaks to us about Christ. It speaks to us to be like Christ and imitate Christ in Christ's humility. And reading verse 3, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, read it with me. 
three that with you, Nehemiah. Rather, in humility, David, in humility, Jake, value others above what? Above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. I could not have created this in a better time, in a better way, because then it says, in your what? Relationships, Annie, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, it's important to know that there are these Greek words that relate. It's like a poem that goes back and forth in a conversation because the very word that means humility also talks about a low mindset in the Greek. A low mindset, a mindset. It also talks about a heart, a heart that is lower, frlin, a lower heart a perspective that allows you to be led. Are you a person of humility? Paul goes on to write, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Didn't consider that he as a person could put himself above others because of what he looked liked, who he was, who his dad was, where he came from. None of that. He could have, but he chose not to. Rather, he made himself nothing. I'm going to slow that down. Jesus Christ came to us as God incarnate, a being who we are to imitate in humility, he made himself nothing by taking the very servant heart, this nature of servitude. I ask you in your workplace, in your office, how many people take a servant mindset a nature of servitude? Or are they relying on their position? Or are they relying on their father? Or are they relying on what they look like and where they come from? I ask you in your school life, at college, university, in high school, junior high school, elementary, do the people you're with have a servant mindset. Being made in human likeness, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he did what? How many men do you know humble themselves? How many women do you know humble themselves? How many people do you know humble themselves? How many siblings humble themselves? It says here that Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. The message we in community, in relationship, is a message of humility, of being humble. Do you believe, do you believe in Emmanuel and that with Emmanuel all things are possible? Because it goes on to speak of what God does to the meek, what God does to the humble, what God does to and for the meek and the humble. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names, that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. 
Philippians chapter 2, a lesson in humility. Now turn with me. Turn with me to the gospel reading for this day. The gospel reading can be found in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew is the very first gospel in the New Testament. Chapter 21. We're going to start with verse 23. The entire verse is a question and answering. What is happening here is there are these people who have brought themselves up in appearance, up in attitude, up in mindset. And they want to embarrass Jesus. They want to put him down. They want to lower his status, not realizing that he had already taken the status of a lowly shepherd. And they question him about who he is. And rather than say, yeah, God is my dad. Y'all need to believe in me. You need to accept me for who I am. Jesus asks a question. He isn't cocky. He isn't over the top. He isn't building himself up. He's not coming into the room as if he knows everything. He simply asks a question. Jesus asks, John the Baptist, can you tell me what was his teaching, where it came from? Was it from heaven or was it human in its origin? Well, they got together and they realized, you know what, we, we can't really answer that question because if we answer it, then we'll look bad. So they said, we don't know. And then Jesus tells them a parable of two sons. Jesus tells them that parable of two sons, one who was asked by his father to go and do something. And he didn't go do it right away, but then he went ahead and did it later. Another son said he would go do it and did it. And they came to the conclusion that it was the first son who did what they were asked to do. I asked the question, do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God? I believe because I find that my life is filled <clears throat> with majesty with wonder, with light, new life and love in my belief. Ezekiel asks that we get a new heart so that we can be guided in this humility, in this humble, meek state, so that in humility, you value others above yourself. Anav. The word in Greek for humility is tope nofrosu. When you break that word apart, it is two words. One meaning lowly, one meaning of mind, of heart, of thought. And then we are told to count ourselves as lowly, to be led, to be led so that we can serve others above ourselves.
the whole message of Matthew chapter 21. Those verses that we read 28 through 32 all culminate to one thing. Jesus is saying to you, Jesus is saying to those who are questioning him. Jesus is saying to me. Jesus is saying to all of us in a we community, in relationships that are humble in servanthood, that we are to repent and believe. Why are we to repent and believe? We are to repent and believe so that our heart and our spirit can be Low, low. Why? So that God can favor us. When we think of humility in the Bible, we must ask ourselves, who in the Bible is humble? In Numbers, chapter 12, verse 3, God tells us, that Moses is the humble, the very personification of a humble human being. God says, more humble than anyone else on earth. And how did he model that? Well, when his brother and sister, who were both prophets, as well as he, started coming after him, he didn't build himself up and say, hey, God speaks to me face to face. That's, that's why I get to do this. No, it was his belief in his heart, in his spirit that brought through to all around him this God relationship. Moses guided us to this God relationship, speaking to God face to face, it says. Because Moses believed. He didn't brag about his belief. He didn't call on God to do all kinds of things to the people, to his brother, his sister. In humility, he was the example. How do we know that God shows favor to the humble, to the meek? The Proverbs tell us in Proverbs 3, 34, it says, God favors the humble. And we see in the example of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ was favored above all the prophets. You are highly favored. And when you intently, in humility, Serve others, value others, count others, be led by others above yourself, then you too will have that favor. When I think of creation and I think of the most humblest being in creation that I have been able to encounter, of course, I think of the trees because you know me, I'm a tree girl. But I think of Royal. And if you've listened to Love God Ministries, if you've listened to me preach, you know Royal already, right? Royal was my very first horse experience. I was able to care for Royal. I was able to groom Royal and make her into this beautiful, beautiful being with God's help. But there was one reason that I could take on this responsibility. It was because she, yes, Royal was a she, she was a beautiful bay horse. She allowed me to in her humility. Now, Royal was so humble, and I've told this particular story over and over because it, it makes a difference. Royal was so humble that when I rode her, she taught me through movements. I didn't know it at the time. I had no idea because I didn't really know how to ride. 
And I remember getting back one day and being really frustrated with Royal. I'm like, Royal, now why do you always like zigzag all the way home? Why do you zigzag when I'm riding you? Why can't you ride in a straight line? That's what I'm thinking. So I was talking to Royal's owner, glorious person, allowed me to groom and ride Royal whenever I wanted. And he said, well, Royal, she's zigging and zagging because she is trying to stay under you. Let me say that again. Royal, this beautiful horse, this glorious being that allowed me to ride her, that made me into a new being, would move over this way because my body leaned this way, would move over to the right a little bit because my body leaned over the right. She was trying to stay underneath me, this lowly being underneath me, humility, humilius, anav. She was trying to be under me so that I would not fall off. Humility. Are you willing to allow somebody to literally ride on your back and stay underneath them, shift and move to the right to hold them up? That is what humility looks like in community. We hold one another up, shifting to one side, to the other side, so that... The community, the collective, each one of us in relationship can be held up and not fall. When I think of humility, I think of Eileen. She was, is one of the most humblest people I know. I'll never forget my first encounter with Eileen. Eileen, a believer, a true believer, quoting scripture, talked to me all the time about belief, came up to me in the library. It was my first week homeschooling. I was gathering all these books and I had my daughter with me. I had this, this big old case of books that I carted around in this crate. And I looked exhausted and probably a little crazy. We were starting this chess club and we were going into the chess club. And there was Aline. If you're watching today, Aline, I say hello to you. Aline came up to me and she's like, are you homeschooling? I'm like, yes. She's like, and she, and she lowered herself toward me. I was sitting down, she, she lowered herself to me. She, she's like, you know, I have a group that I meet with. Would you, would you like to join our group? And I'm like, oh my goodness, yes, I would love to. The crazy cool thing is, do I believe? Yes, I believe. The crazy cool thing is that that morning I said, God, you need to hook me up with some homeschoolers because you know I have no idea what I'm doing. And that very day, that prayer was answered through Aline, God's humble servant. Do you believe? Are you willing to be humble? in your belief, in your knowing, in your growing. Because in humility, in humility, you value others above yourself. And there, God can guide you into the favor of God. Homeschooling became a breeze because I had this group of women helping me, specifically Aileen, all the time. I remember Aileen volunteering to allow Deborah to sleep over, recognizing that I was a single mom working full time, crazy tired, giving me a free space and a free time. We are here to value others before ourselves. 
I know we live in a world that it doesn't seem like that. It seems like that's askew. It seems like we're kind of falling over here. We're kind of falling over here. But believe me, God, when we allow ourselves to be humble, God will always keep us steady and allow us to sit comfortably and not fall off. Finally, I'll never forget this one lovely engineer at Electronic Data Systems when I worked there. Oh my goodness. He was a rocket scientist. One of the things I used to say all the time is, it's not rocket science. Coding is not rocket science. Coding and assembler is not rocket science. Coding in this land is not rocket science. I would say that all the time. And then I met this fellow and he was literally a rocket scientist. He never told anybody. He didn't say anything. One day I was just sitting with him talking about this project that I was working on and he was on the project. He was a part of my team. And we just got to talking and he said, have you seen this? And I'm like, no, I'm like, what is that? He's like, well, it's, it's, it's a rocket. And I'm like, oh, and we started talking about rockets. And he's like, well, you know, he was telling me about astrology and all these things. And, he, and I said, did you build that? He said, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I did. And so he wasn't bragging. What I had to ask him all these questions about this rock. And then I said, <laughs> I said, are you a rocket scientist? And he's like, well, yeah, you would never have known it. This wonderful being, he would sit in his cubicle all day, not make a sound, get his work done on time, under budget, all those wonderful things, everything assigned to him he would do. And yet he was a rocket scientist as well. How cool is that? On his free time, on his weekends, he would launch rockets. Yes, literally, he would build and fire off rockets. And yet, to the eye, he was this lowly being supporting projects. Anav, this humilious being supporting projects, moving to the right when needed, moving to the left when needed, supporting us and building these wonderful, wonderful software packages along with being a rocket scientist. The question today is, do you believe? And in your belief, are you humble? In humility, in humility, we are to serve, we are to value, we are to become lower than others. Can you be a person enough who is humble? May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Take a moment and share that peace with those around you in humility, in unity, and in community. Hey, it's Shamai Reed with I Am Refocus Radio. Make sure you go to IamRefocusRadio.com to listen to today's episode. Once again, like we always say, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Peace.